Hello, uh, my name is Mikhail. I work in Black Lane as a senior software engineer. I actually work right now as a backend engineer. Uh, just decided to switch from IS to something different to have maybe more experience just around uh, different things. I, right now I do stuff mostly in Go. Uh, and sometimes in TypeScript uh, and in Python, but yeah, right now I just do mostly backend. Uh, but still, like I did my fair share of Fires development, which was like three or four years. So yeah. Uh, so, anyways, um, today I'm going to discuss about Redux, which is uh, I would say just one of the interesting architectures out there, especially for the mobile. Um, before I get into technical details, I want to tell you a little story, like how did I made something in Redux? So it was like winter, Russia, and I just got an offer from Black Lane and but I didn't have like that many uh, money on my savings account and I wanted to have a little bit more before I move into Berlin. So I would be sure that, you know, the first months I live there, I have enough money. Um, so I decided to help my friends with the, uh, with the app they wanted to, to do. And, uh, but the app was kind of, you know, like simple. And I decided, yeah, that's a little bit boring and I don't want to really do boring stuff. So I decided to make my, my life a little bit harder and I decided to approach a new architecture and I tried to do this like in a way that would be like um, more meaningful for me. So I did the, this architecture and today I will tell you about this app and like uh, the architecture itself. So first, uh, two things about the app. So the app is what it does. It just scans NFC chips on some closes, right? And then when you scan this chip, uh, you get, uh, you get some info about the product and the, the person can just look out like, uh, some cool videos, photos, and whatnot. So let's see a demo. So here we scan, I think, a pair of shoes. And you see like there is a cool info about there. Uh, just a fun fact, I didn't use any libraries here. So I did everything myself, including this small loader. So yeah, I really decided to make my life a little bit harder. Uh, and I also, uh, maybe the hardest part there was to make this custom transition with a card. I had to modify the library in a, a way that it would be smoother and better anyways. Uh, so I did this app and as you see, like this is the last page, which is history. And here I just do, uh, download the files from backend and we have a lot of different uh, scans, but of the same product. So it may look a little bit strange. Anyway, uh, so the app has uh, two screens uh, on the tab bar, main screen and history screen. Both of them, they lead to a detail screen. And from the detail screen, you can go into photo gallery and you can go into video player. Uh, that's it. So not, not that hard. So, uh, what is like our plan today? We're first we'll discuss about what is Redux. Uh, we'll discuss like what main parts in Redux, like uh, what are main entities and so on. Then we'll see like what uh, specific parts in IS are the most difficult one. And uh, yeah, and the last one would be about advantages and disadvantages of the architecture for IS. 
So the Redux di diagram is kind of simple. We have a view which subscribes to the store to get events. And actually it first it sends some events to the store. It sends some actions, for example, button taps or uh, I don't know, like screen transitions, any, any event basically which can happen on the view uh, goes into store as an action. Inside we have the business logic called reducers. They get an action and they get current state of the app and they return a new state, which then view subscribes and it listens for the new state and then it updates itself. So we have this kind of unidirectional architecture. So what is, first we'll discuss what is action. So action, it is the only way to interact with the store, right? So you can only send actions and any other subscriber uh, or any other entity can only send actions to the store, right? This is the only way we communicate. And this action can consist of arbitrary data and it uh, rep is represented by classes or enum, uh, structs or enums. Uh, you, you of course can use classes, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, so just action is a protocol and everything, just empty protocol. So everything can conform to that. And then you can have, for example, this uh, example of like scanning enabled action, which sends some parameters anyways. So the next thing is a state. And uh, this is the only source of truth in the app. So you can have only one state in the app. And that means that actually everything is kind of synchronized. And the only way you, every view will get exactly the same state. So it's really important that, uh, important part of this architecture that you have the data synchronized across every every app every part of the app and it usually because we have only one state it usually has a nested structure uh, for example here we have like actually one substate per screen which and all of them they uh form you know the total the whole app state so and as an example we have this screen state which is a history list state and it contains uh, different entries for the table view, which we'll later display, right? So the state is immutable. We use structs there. Um, and um, so uh, when a view receives the state, it cannot basically uh, affect the state inside the store, right? So it only gets a copy and that's very important because the, the state can be changed only inside the store. So it's kind of fully immutable, but you need to know that the copies of the state can be made really often. For example, every time your app updates, it changes the state, right? And for example, if some of the views are updates really fast, for example, I don't know, 10 times a second, then you would make copies of the state a lot of the time and you will copy all the data, right? This is not really good. So we, in hard, in some complex cases, you need to make state copy and write. So then you will not be copying stuff unless it is changed. And again, we have one state for the app, just don't forget that guys. Anyways, um, so, Then we have this thing called reducers, which is the main like business logic part of the app. Uh, as we uh, discussed previously, they get the they live inside the store, they get the action, they also get the current state and they return new state. So it's basically a function which takes two parameters, uh, action and state and returns state. Makes sense. So, this is how it looks like in real life. So we have like this kind of action uh, and here it consists of different like 
let's say sub reducers uh, for each state, uh, for each like sub state. And then you have like your return. Uh, when the action goes, it gets into this big reducer and then it gets into, let's say the, each of those sub reducers and then you get all the results and return this in a new state because like actually this the action can be uh interesting not only for one specific like sub reducer but for many of them for example uh to one action navigation reducer can react and at the same time maybe some other reducer can also react uh for example we have this history list reducer uh it listens only for a specific action. And if our action is of specific type, then it uh, kind of looks in the data of this action and changes the state accordingly. Okay, so reducers, again, they're pure functions. They're, this is very important, they're synchronous. So you should not have any kind of complex calculations there because like if you, will have this calculation, they will block the whole app and the state will not be updated in this time, right? And there should be only the changes relating to the state. Again, like there should not be any asynchronous stuff. There should not be any, uh, any other stuff, right? Just, just pure business logic and it's better to be fast. Uh, so what is, so just like, Quickly, let's see how the view reacts to the changes. So again, it sends an action and it gets new state. So how exactly does it do? So it's, for example, a view will appear, it subscribes to something and presumably a view will disappear and can, um, uh, it can unsubscribe. And, and then here I just select, let's say one of the sub states and then, uh, I define that I'm only interested in this current product state. And on the main queue async, I update the view because uh, we, we actually should not rely uh, on the queue on which the state is returned. We can, we should always uh, make sure that something updates on the main queue, right? Uh, anyways, uh, when we also, interact with store with we do this like this which is dispatch some kind of action for example here is just an enum which we are saying uh the store that we want to expand the uh video player so again like what is what about asynchronous tasks so we know that we cannot put them inside reducers because they are synchronous they are synchronous and uh yeah so we also cannot put them inside view because view views are dump and they are not for you know like requests and other uh this kind of asynchronous logic so we actually have specific component for that called middleware uh and so what is middleware middleware is actually the guy that also lives in the store as you see like uh before we discussed that we have the action we have reducers that change the state, but we also have middlewares that can also react to the action, but instead of uh, changing the state, they actually uh, send a new action. So what happens? For example, you have some, you know, uh, let's say you load new screen and you uh, want some middleware to go and get some data. And when the data is loaded, you also push new action, for example, data loaded action, which will then go to some reducers. So that's how uh, middleware works. And uh, just want to uh, mention that uh, you can have uh, at the same time, not only reducers reacting to action, but also middlewares reacting to action. So for example, here, uh, when we want to transition uh, to make history transition, you want to first go to like navigation reducer and understand like uh, what exact transition you need to make. And uh, second, you also want to fetch products on this particular screen, right? 
So, and that's how it happens, right? So we also, the middleware gets this action and it does some fetch and then it sends a product fetch action. So that's how it looks like. So basically we, we filter the actions that we don't need, but if we have the action that we really need, then we uh, uh, just do some stuff. For example, load product information, and then we send a new action, either product load completed or failed. Uh, so next we are approaching the, probably the most, uh, the hardest topic or the most complex topic, uh, at least for me uh, in the Redux world, it's the navigation. And um, so why navigation is the, uh, so first let's say like, what can we do about the navigation? So first we can think of leaving it outside the state, but I think that is like bad decision because when you think about this, navigation state is also a really important thing because like just looking, if you don't keep the navigation state, you don't know like on which screen you are or which screen you are going to update and you actually can miss some important information and you cannot like make some decisions based uh, on state without navigation. So I think the only real decision is to keep navigation inside state, but then you have to observe all, uh, you know, native UI kit transitions to uh, somehow reflect this in the state. And this can be kind of tricky because like, uh, native UI components don't know anything about Redux. So you have to uh, monitor every transition and know uh, like how to reflect this in the state. Uh, so let's uh, see um, our demo again. So we have mostly model transitions, right? So this, this was the first one, this was the second one. Then we go back. Uh, then we go to, I think, another model transition, right? This is Safari view controller. Uh, then we um, go back. This is basically stack transitions, right? And here is something different, right? When we go uh, change tab bar, uh, we actually, uh, let's say, change the branch. And in my case, there were no view controllers on that branch, uh, except for, for one, right? But actually inside this, there can be also some kind of complex navigation. So why am I, well, let's just look at the diagram. So we go, so first do model transitions, then we go back and then we do like, let's say uh, container controller transitions or we just change the, the, the presented controller anyways. So, so um, uh, why is this important? Because we cannot model our, in the state, we cannot model our transitions just as a stack because uh, we can change this kind of branches and this looks like more as a graph because uh, like imagine you can have three screens on one branch and two screens on the other and you can immediately transition from one branch to the other one. So it looks like more as, as a, like a graph or a tree. Uh, you can think of a tab bar transitions as switching the branch and you can think of a model transitions as creating more levels in the tree or, uh, yeah. So um, that's how navigation state looks like. Uh, in my case, it's just like a dictionary uh, with branches uh, well, we'll, and the key is the name of a branch. So we have two screens. So basically there will be two elements and then we have like a stack of transitions for each of the branch. Uh, so you need to keep track of all changes and you need to mostly write custom components, which will update your, you know, uh, the, your navigation state and you should be ready to face difficulties and like find some solutions 
uh, for example, like this one, right? So I need to know like when I dismiss like my AV player view controller, so how can I do this? I need to actually subclass it and, or maybe I can do something else, but the idea is that I need to somewhere put this event uh, that I dispatch uh, close action. So I say that I go back from this screen to the previous one, so I should change my navigation state. So how I build the navigation. So first, like as we saw, view controller sends an action and the action goes to navigation reducer. And here, for example, we have this navigation reducer and it waits for different actions. Here, I, it's actually very large, but this is just a small part of it. Like we look at this photo gallery action and if we want to open uh, like there is different types of uh, photos we, we can open, but don't think about this. The main thing that we can open a photo and then we should go to the photo gallery and we can close the gallery and then we should just remove last transition. So after that, we change the state and there is actually a specific component which also subscribe to the state, which does, we specifically handles the transitions uh, what it does, it actually tries to see if we, if we already handled this transition and if we uh, did not handle this. So we notify all our observers. And so I have the specific entity called coordinator, which observes uh, uh, specific, uh, let's say, transitions related to some views. For example, I have the current product coordinator, which is um, responsible for a product detail screen. And it is responsible for this kind of transitions from current product to video player, from current product to photo gallery, as we see that we just here uh, present some view controller and so on. Uh, so it's not that hard actually, but like, uh, it's kind of convenient. Um, so let's recap. We have a screen composition reflected in the state. The transitions are instantiated via actions, right? In this like uh, several, like in this um, several step structure, right? So we go through navigation reducer, then we go to transition handler, then we go to coordinator, and then we do transitions. Of course, you can simplify that, but just like uh, I thought that it made more sense to do in this multi-step way. And you also need to observe specific UI kit transitions to make sure your um, everything is reflected in the state and it's always fresh. So then we have this notion of UI state. As I said, like we have only one state in the store, but sometimes you need to, let, let's say, also keep something like a view state, right? To assist you with some animations or to assist you with some other changes that you just uh, want to do UI wise, for example. Uh, and I think, uh, so one of the examples is like, imagine you have a collection view and you have uh, one state and you just loaded a, a bunch of, you know, cells and then you have the other state and you need to diff between, you need to have a diff between two states to find out like which cells you need to animate animatedly, for example, hide or something like that. Uh, and you can do this by keeping a specific view state for this. And also, uh, yeah, uh, you basically need to uh, transform, you know, the models that are in the state into cell models, which would be most likely in your uh, view. So you still need to have something like view state. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, how it is. So, but these things we keep specifically for uh, UI presentation, right? So uh, we do this kind of state diffs and uh, to update only the needed stuff. For example, in my app, I had this 
use case when the items were empty i created new items but when they were not empty i knew that i did not want to update anything uh and the only thing like i wanted to do i maybe wanted to update like video player state and maybe update the main photo if it was downloaded uh so yeah that's it so now i will talk about like the advantages of the architecture uh so first advantage like everything has a state we have a clear and explicit logic even though you know it can be very um you know like it can be you need to meticulously write every possible case basically in this reducers so you can it can take a lot of code to write all that but in the end you will not have any state that you don't expect so that's very important and that's very convenient so you'll your app that your app will not be in, in an inconsistent state it's also easy to broadcast application-wide events because like uh you can have many things uh just listening to the state and if something uh you know some views send some action it you are sure that everybody will receive uh the updated state and you don't have have you basically have only one way of communication that also makes a lot of stuff easier yeah and state is always synchronized you don't have any like uh, inconsistencies in the app which is also cool and you may think that it's all very good but there is still a lot of disadvantages and first of all and maybe i would say one of the main ones is that navigation is really complex uh, you need to kind of handle all these navigation states and the more complex your navigation gets the more you know the more complex navigation logic you have to write there so and it can be tedious so yeah i think like one store per app or one state per app is not really convenient because like sometimes it's like it's get very big and you have to do this uh copy and writes if you have like frequent updates and so on so it can be kind of hard and uh, i think like in the big apps it can be kind of hard to maintain uh and also it doesn't play well with core data and, and as fetch results controller because like they have you know like let's say the state in itself uh like the database and you have to you know like some somehow intertwine core data with the state so i'm not sure that i feel that it's that it would be kind of hard i mean like i didn't use this approach in the app where i had core data but i would think that it will not be easy and maybe some key takeaways uh from my talk so you can actually like when you do redux you understand that making like state-based uh screens and like having some state uh written in some parts of your app is really important because even though you don't have to you know you know put everything as a state but you can have like some main uh main you know uh, uh, um, i forgot how to say it in english but yeah uh, you can basically uh, define your view logic very clear when you will say that it can be only like in this four states uh, maybe even if you will not write all the data that the, the view can have at the time if you just define the states sometimes it can really uh simplify a lot so i really recommend you to try uh to make states explicit when you're uh doing stuff with your views so uh you can use this store based thing only for the business logic and in one app for example i use this approach uh just for uh keeping everything about the logic related to marketing banners so i would know for example if i show if i shown some banner on one screen it will not be shown in the other screen so i also had this kind of marketing actions and then uh i had this kind of marketing state and something like this so because like we, we really had this very complex banner system but 
anything else was outside the state and it's also worked kind of fine. Uh, and I would just recommend you to experiment with Redux like architectures because it's really fun and it's, I would say it's a little bit hard, but it's also kind of interesting and maybe it can be uh, cool to do this with Swift UI, which is like mm, declarative and so on. But I would be careful if you are planning to build a really big project because like you will have like many difficulties and there is a high chance of uh, changing the architecture uh, in the end because like uh, at least with ui kit it doesn't play really well sometimes because ui kit is based on a little bit different principles anyways um thanks for the for listening uh i hope you you know had some interesting time or Maybe at least you uh, have more uh, knowledge about Redux. And I am open to your questions. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.